Welcome back to the channel, and it's pretty obvious what we're up to today. Doing a major brake upgrade on my Forester. We're going from the uh, uh, single pot sliding caliper setup to a four pot caliper in the front, or four piston, and two piston calipers in the back. These are from the 2006-2007 Subaru WRX. Uh, you could also actually find them on a Nissan 350Z. Uh, I'm not sure the exact years. They're, they're pretty similar. They'll look a little bit different. Um, for the sake of this video, since I have a 2006 Forester, I'm just going to call these 2006 WRX parts because it'll just simplify what I'm doing. Although I'm sure they were available on more years than just 06 and 07 and I know they'll fit. Uh, I think it was from like 2002 up to 2007. So this is what I have for it and we'll do a little rundown on some of the parts. And we're going to start with, so the fronts are a direct bolt on to the Forester. Uh, you can use the same rotors, you just have to pull the old calipers off, put these on, bleed them, put in your pads, you're good to go. The rear, however, you have two options. You can switch over to the 0607 WRX knuckles, which is totally disassembling the whole rear end, putting them back together, then you have to do the alignment and everything. Or the other option is you go with the Torx Solutions, or I believe there's a couple other companies that make them. Uh, this is a adapter kit that gives you a couple of brackets just like this. This will bolt on in place uh, of your factory caliper in the back. This bolts in there and then the new calipers will bolt into those and it spaces it up a little bit. So you use the WRX rotor. So I'll just say 2006 WRX rotor and it sets it at the proper height and you are all set to go. I think it's about a uh, half inch difference in the height as to how this fits. Also, you'll see the uh, stock bolt pattern, these outer two bolts, quite a bit larger than what this is. These go to the smaller ones. Uh, so we'll get more into detail when we get to putting these on. Um, now, I, I try to do OEM parts when I can, so like I got the new hardware kits, um, but I went with some Hawk pads. I really struggled finding uh, the pads that fit. I was trying uh, Stop Tech, Power Stop, Hawk, um, even my local auto parts store, whether it's Advance Autos, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, um, really struggled getting the right pads, and I wanted them to be ceramic. So I found those on Amazon as a Hawk uh, HPS, which I believe is High Performance Street. I went with those pads as a recommendation from a friend who I actually got these calipers from, uh, which by the way, did not look like this when I bought them. This is a complete rebuild. Uh, we're talking all new seals. Um, I will put links down in the description uh, for, for the parts that you'll need. Um, but you buy one kit for the front, not two kits like some people have been saying, one kit and it will rebuild both calipers. It gives you all new inner seals, outer dust boots and snap rings um, as well as whatever lubricant you need. I did have to replace a couple of the pistons on this. Let me go grab one. So this is one of the original pistons and let me get up here closer. If you look at that, that was all scored and uh, it, it was seized up in there. I have some video on how I had to get those out because they didn't come out very easy. Uh, so I had to replace a couple of pistons and got those in, got them put together. The rear ones, everything came apart, went back together just fine, no issues on that. Again, with the rear, one kit will rebuild both and they are OEM Subaru parts. Again, I will put links down in the description for that as well as the rotors that I went with. I didn't go with drilled and slotted. I just went with a plain finished rotor because this is just gonna be a street car. I just wanted that extra stopping ability. Uh, I've, I've upgraded performance, I've upgraded power handling and now it's time to address stopping. So that's what I'm doing in this video. So uh, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna jack up the car, pull the tires, come back to you starting with the rear. And I'm gonna do these one at a time, bleeding them 
as I go. So I'm gonna be starting from the farthest point of the master cylinder. Uh, being a left-hand drive car, I'm starting right rear, then left rear, right front, left front. So that's the order I'm gonna do it in. Uh, I think I will probably only film installing them on the right-hand side because just one side's gonna be the same as the other. The only difference may be if I run into some issues as I go along, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so I am supported on jack stands. I did slide the tires underneath the car as well, just for a little extra security. A few tools you're gonna to wanna to pick up, or at least have with you. I've got a uh, container that I put my old brake fluid in. This is just brake fluid, not oil, because uh, you can't mix the two when you go to recycle them. Set of just ratchets, uh, different size deep well, shallow well sockets, and some wrenches as well, or spanners. I do have this little hose uh, with a fitting on it for hooking up to the bleeder screws when I bleed them. And yes, it's just an old uh, rubbing alcohol bottle that I got a string on to support it that uh, I use to bleed the fluid into. And then this, this has been one of my favorite kits that I've bought. Uh, this is, open this up here. These are all Allen head sockets. Uh, you've got standard as well as metric. And I picked this up on Amazon, pretty good price on it. I'll drop a link for this down in the description as well. Uh, so look for that, it's, it's definitely been handy because you're gonna need these with the uh, adapters for the rear calipers. So we'll uh, get started on that now. Okay, starting out with the right rear. Uh, first thing you wanna do is break everything loose. Uh, so I wanna start with my banjo bolt slide my container underneath there so that uh, it will catch any fluid should it drip. I'm going to break that banjo bolt loose. Okay, so it'll come loose, no problems. Uh, and I'm going to pull the caliper separate from the caliper bracket because I want to hang that and get everything else set back up in here so that's just a little bit less stuff that's in my way. Also, um, I'll show you that. I got a coat hanger that I just kind of bent makes a nice little hook for hanging um, hanging that caliper while I'm doing other stuff so it takes the tension off that line. We're gonna go ahead and compress the uh, piston because I wanna try and push as much of that fluid back into the master cylinder as I can so that way it doesn't drain it, uh, completely drain it out while I'm working on this. So it's a 12 millimeter for the banjo bolt and the calipers are 14 and I've already broke these loose so I'm gonna go ahead and I got those loose uh, small pry bar just to get in here and compress that piston there we go now also make oop, make that easier to get it off get that pad to slide back there we go hung out of the way. This will take a 14 millimeter socket to get the next bolts out. Still plenty of meat left on those pads but good time for an upgrade. One other thing to point out is the new rotors when they go on uh, won't clear this dust shield. A um, couple of options is to pull it completely off and try and get the larger one for the WRX or you just come back and cut it at that point. Mine, let me show you, mine's actually kind of a uh, get it in the right spot you can see there's it's rusted through right here so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it off right at that lip um, and just take that whole outer ring off all right so a little bit of learning as I'm going along um, I'm finding where the spot welds are that hold that together you usually find those just scraping at it 
And I think if I get close to what looks like the center, it might be hard to see on camera here. I'm just gonna make a small enough dimple to hold the tip of the uh, plug cutter or spot weld cutter. I'm gonna get that back in there. That should be enough. And if I get my pry bar behind it. I'm sorry, I was slightly off on that one. They are hard to see, but a little bit of work, they come off and you'll find them and then you just come back through and grind that down. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock all those out and uh, be ready for the next step. Okay, so the dust shield is off. Uh, I went and I ground it down a little bit with a sander, a rotary sander, and um, spray painted it with a satin black. I did just throw a bag over top of the hub. So I'm gonna take a minute, get that all cleaned up, and then we will go over how the calipers and everything go back on. Right now is a good time to uh, get our bracket adapter set up. So they give you uh, two of these. I've already got this one attached. Why they put the logo on the inside, I don't know. You don't see that when it's on. Would have been better out here. Um, so that's what this one will look like. They give you four coarse bolts. They give you four fine thread short bolts and four fine thread long bolts. Now, in my case, I didn't need the coarse ones, so I'm just gonna drop those back in the box. The long ones are actually what is used to attach the bracket to the caliper, and it just pokes through, and I already checked to make sure it's not gonna hit the rotor, so we're good there. The shorter ones will go through the back of the knuckle and into this lower piece right here. You can see some, I've already tried fitting this one up. This one is for the left hand side. Bleeder valve goes on top because you want the air to go and escape. So that's why that's up on top. So this is the left hand side. So I'm gonna set that aside. We'll get to that in a little bit. This one is our right hand side because it goes in like this. I just got a plug, I can get rid of that now. That was helping seal that up so nothing got in there. And you'll see I got brand new bleeder screws on here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that cap off. Maybe. There you go, brand new bleeder screws. So this one will sit like this. This bracket will go on here like that. So I'm gonna use these last two longer ones right here. And this is where those hex heads come in. You just need the uh, eight millimeter and my wrench. Okay, I got those snug down. I'll finish tightening those when I put it on the car. And uh, so I'm gonna set that aside. Now let's take a look at the rotors. Here are the new ones that I got. They are, these are rear ones, yes. They are vented, uh, so that's an improvement over the other ones. Um, they still do have the parking brake, the parking shoes, uh, so it's a drum disc combo. Here's the old one that came off, and that'll give you a comparison as to just how much larger you're making your rear rotors. So a lot better grabbing surface, a lot more of it, so you're less likely to experience brake fade. So set the old one aside, got the new one ready. I've got everything cleaned up and I'm ready to get back underneath the car. So I've already uh, taken some brake and parts cleaner, cleaned up the new drums, the new sh uh, rotors. They are ready to go on. Now I need my new caliper. And that's going to go on the inside. All right, 
all my bolts are tight, I'm going to push. I'm checking to make sure that the bolts that come through aren't hitting the back side of the rotor. Take a look in there. Yep, we're good, plenty of clearance. Now I'm ready to uh, get my pad set and then we will transfer the line over. Okay, so I ended up having to pull this back out, slide that first pad with the wear sensor in from the bottom. I'm going to lock it back in place. Pad number two, I'm going to go ahead and start the upper one. Get that on through. Then we can put this under there, under there, and that's in. And then there's just this clip that uh, locks in it from the back. Okay, so I got it in. And at least I can say I was smart. When I took these apart originally, I took a photo of it. Uh, slightly different clip on there, but it's still the same. bolt one new washer second washer Alright, so I got a brand new bottle of brake fluid, it's a dot four synthetic, and I have got my 10 millimeter set up there. Now this will snap right on. It's going to go down into just a little bit of clean brake fluid that's on the bottom. Before I do that though, hey, let's get this out of the way. I don't need that up here anymore. If I take my string and I tie it up to my strut, so that's down in there. I'm just going to pop this open and I'm going to go pump the brake a couple times. So this is the first one ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then uh, join you again when we go to the front. So here's a comparison for you. This is the right side caliper I just pulled off. That's the one that's gonna go on the left side. Uh, but you can get a good look here. I'm gonna flip these over. So there you can see the pads in here compared to the pads in that one. I went ahead and slid them in first just to make my life easier when I put it on the car. Um, so double piston pushing from both sides with a fixed caliper and this is a sliding caliper. And uh, these tend to seize up on it so it's easier to fix a piston than to fix that I think because the metal into metal like that is really difficult. Okay, so the rears are done and now we're on to the front and for these we're going to need a 14 millimeter and a 17 millimeter. Might need a uh, combination wrench or a spanner to get in here because this upper one is so close to the bolts for the strut, the upper part of your knuckle, that uh, you might not be able to get, get a wrench in there. There we go, one. Being careful not to kink that. All right, so I made a mistake. Here's the factory rotor. Here's the rotor that I ordered, and it's uh, it's smaller. So I've got an old set of brake pads. I'm going to go ahead and throw on and put the rotors back on, and then I will order the right ones here in the future. So these are the pads that were on here 
uh, when I bought these calipers and uh, they'll be okay for a little while so I'm gonna go ahead and put these in use my existing ones and then we will swap back out to the correct uh, rotors and pads when I get those in okay so this side let's see if it should drop right over it may have to oh, my pad shifted there we go That's why I've got the bucket there. Eight mil. Yeah, the fronts are at eight millimeter. Can't see it, but it's flowing. Okay, get this out of here. One more side to do. I'm not going to record that, but uh, then when we come back, I'll be putting the tires on and we'll take a look at it. Now, before I put the other side on, let's take a look here. Weight wise, these are virtually the same. Uh, but the big difference is going to be two piston on this and this one is going to be four piston. So we're going to have a lot better clamping pressure, better braking ability on it. So fortunately I have the ability to drive a different car. Ordered the new rotors for the front, got those put on so we're good to go. Now I'm going to go out, bed the brakes which is uh, getting up to like 35 miles an hour and hitting the brakes, slowing down several times to really get them hot, beds the pads in. Going to go do that and uh, so that's going to do it for maybe this year. It's, it's getting cold out, uh, not a whole lot more I can do outside right now. A couple of other little projects that I want to do, we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, I'm done, going to go bed those brakes and thanks for watching. See you in the next video.